Have you ever stood under a star-filled sky and felt a profound sense of connection to everything? A feeling that you are more than just flesh and bone, more than just a fleeting spark in the vast, cold darkness of the cosmos. What happens when that spark goes out? It is the oldest question humanity has ever asked. For millennia we have answered it with faith, with philosophy, with stories of heavens and underworlds. But what if the answer isn't hidden in ancient texts, but in the very fabric of reality itself? What if the most fundamental laws of the universe don't just allow for our existence, but for our persistence, a form of immortality not of the body, but of the mind? Today, we journey beyond the veil, exploring a breathtaking possibility that our consciousness is a form of quantum energy incapable of being destroyed. To begin this journey, we must first confront the greatest mystery within our own heads, consciousness itself. What is it really? We know the brain is a three-pound universe of neurons and synapses, a biological machine of incredible complexity. It processes light, sound and touch, allowing us to navigate our world. But that doesn't explain the experience. It doesn't explain why you feel the warmth of the sun on your skin, why a piece of music can bring you to tears, or the simple, subjective awareness of being you. This is what philosophers call the hard problem of consciousness. How does non-feeling matter, the simple atoms that make up your brain, create subjective feeling? Neuroscientists can map every neural pathway that fires when you see the color red, but they can't explain the experience of redness itself. There is a gap, a chasm between the physical processes and the inner world they somehow generate. And sometimes, we get glimpses from the edge of that chasm. People who have had near-death experiences often report a profound sense of awareness while their brain shows little to no activity. They describe floating outside their bodies, witnessing events they couldn't possibly have seen. While these accounts are not scientific proof, they present a tantalizing puzzle. They hint that consciousness might not be as tethered to our biology as we assume. They force us to ask a radical question. Is the brain a generator of consciousness? Or is it more like a radio receiver tuning into a signal that exists elsewhere? To find a possible answer, we must leave the world we know. We have to shrink ourselves down past the cells, past the molecules, past the atoms, into a realm where all the rules of reality break down. Welcome to the quantum world. Down here, things don't behave as they should. Particles can be in multiple places at once, a state called superposition. Think of it like a spinning coin, simultaneously heads and tails until the moment it lands. Before it's measured, a particle exists in a cloud of pure potential. And it gets stranger. Sometimes two particles can become linked or entangled. No matter how far apart they are, across a room or across the galaxy, they remain connected. If you measure the state of one, you instantly know the state of the other. Einstein famously called this spooky action at a distance. This isn't science fiction. It's the proven bedrock reality of our universe. It tells us that at its most fundamental level, the universe is not a collection of separate, solid things. It is a shimmering, interconnected web of energy and information. And here's where our journey takes a fascinating turn. One of the most bizarre rules of the quantum world is the observer effect. That cloud of potential, that spinning coin, only collapses into a single definite state when it is observed. The very act of looking at reality seems to shape what reality is. So, who is the observer? For decades, this has been a source of fierce debate. But a daring group of scientists and thinkers have proposed a mind-bending idea. What if the observer is us? What if consciousness is the missing ingredient? What if our awareness is the force that collapses quantum possibilities into the concrete world we experience every moment of every day? This isn't just a philosophical fancy. It suggests a deep, profound link between the mind and the material world. This line of thinking opens the door to theories that once seemed outlandish. Take panpsychism, the idea that consciousness isn't unique to brains. It suggests that consciousness is a fundamental property of the universe, like mass or electrical charge. Under this view, an electron might possess a tiny primitive spark of experience. A rock would have very little, 
but a complex, highly connected system like a human brain could give rise to the rich, vibrant consciousness we know. We are not the source of consciousness, but its most complex expression. Then there is the integrated information theory, which posits that consciousness is a measure of a system's ability to process and integrate information. The more interconnected and complex the information, the higher the level of consciousness. If these ideas hold any water, then consciousness isn't a ghost in the machine. It is woven into the very mathematics of reality. Our thoughts, our intentions, our awareness. They might be participants in the quantum dance. And if that's true, it changes everything we think we know about life and death. Let's return to a fundamental law of our universe, something we learn in high school science class. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change form. The energy from the sun becomes the energy in a plant, which becomes the energy in our bodies. It is a closed cosmic loop. Now consider this. Our brains hum with electrical energy. Every thought, every memory, every feeling is a complex pattern of electrochemical signals. This is a measurable physical form of energy. So when the biological machine of the body stops working, what happens to that energy? According to the laws of physics, it can't just vanish. It must transform, it must go somewhere. The information it carries, the sum total of you, your personality, your memories, must be conserved. Could it be that what we call our self is a complex, self-sustaining pattern of quantum information? An intricate energy field temporarily hosted by a biological body. When the host perishes, the field doesn't disappear. It is released. This is not so different from what mystics and spiritual traditions have said for thousands of years. They spoke of a soul, a spirit, a life force that endures beyond the physical form. Perhaps they were not speaking in metaphor. Perhaps they were describing a fundamental reality using the language they had, an ancient intuition about the conservation of consciousness. If our consciousness is a form of quantum energy, a packet of information, then its journey doesn't end with our last breath. It merely begins a new chapter. But what would that journey look like? What happens to this liberated energy? This is where we step into the realm of profound speculation, guided by the strange logic of the quantum world. Does our individual consciousness persist? Does your unique awareness, your sense of I, remain intact, free to explore the cosmos in a form we cannot yet comprehend? Or does it merge back into something larger? Like a single raindrop returning to the ocean, does our individual consciousness dissolve back into a universal cosmic field of awareness? A state of pure being, connected to everything that ever was and ever will be. Maybe both are true. Perhaps we rejoin a universal source, but retain the echo of our individuality, adding our unique experience to the cosmic tapestry. Our lives, our loves, our struggles, and our joys become a permanent part of the universe's memory. This isn't just wishful thinking anymore. The lines between physics, neuroscience, and philosophy are blurring. Scientists around the world are designing experiments to test for quantum effects in the brain, to understand the nature of information, and to probe the very structure of reality. We are standing on the precipice of a new revolution in human understanding, one that could redefine what it means to be alive. The universe, it turns out, might be far more mysterious and far more magical than we ever dared to imagine. We are not just inhabitants of the cosmos. We might be its co-creators. We are not just temporary flashes of light, but enduring notes in an eternal cosmic symphony. Our consciousness, the very thing that allows us to ponder these questions, may be our ticket to immortality. An immortality not of flesh, but of fundamental energy, forever woven into the fabric of space and time. The next time you look up at the stars, remember that the same energy that fuels them also fuels the consciousness within you. You are not separate from the universe. You are the universe experiencing itself. What do you think? Is consciousness a product of the brain? Or is the brain a conduit for a universal consciousness? Is this the future of science or a bridge too far? Share your thoughts and theories in the comments below. I'm genuinely curious to hear what you believe. And if this journey into the quantum realm of consciousness sparked something within you, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more explorations into the deepest mysteries of our existence.
Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss a chance to question everything. Thank you for watching.